Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I'm here to look at a Mitsubishi L200. Okay, so a customer just said um, it literally just finished doing a regen as it pulled up here, but what's happening is it's regening very often. So, a bit of the story with this one is um, it went into limp mode. Uh, he brought it to a garage. They done a forced regen that fixed the problem uh, temporarily. Um, within 200 miles, it happened again. Brought it back to the garage, they'd done another force regen. Again, he was happy to drive away. Um, then the vehicle went into limp mode again, and the customer said himself he had a look over the vehicle and he found a split boost hose. Uh, he then put the boost hose on, and this time, instead of sort of 20 to 50 miles, he got sort of 300 miles out of it. And now the problem is back again. Um, but what's happening is he said the vehicle is regen, and after he's fitted now the boost hose. The vehicle is regen and or I don't know how he I never asked how he knows I'm not really familiar with these vehicles but he said he knows that the vehicle is regen in every sort of 20 to 50 miles which is very excessive so let's see if we can figure out what's going on okay we're gonna set up diagnostic we'll do a scan Mitsubishi I didn't even check the year on this I'll have to have a look at that in a minute I think it's a 16 2015 uh, we'll do a high speed scan see what faults we have it has just it has had a couple of four free gen so um, what the customer said is this time obviously before the fault if it, before it goes back into limp mode he's brought it down to me to have a look so hopefully we can find some issues uh, TM can timeout I'm not sure what that means transmission TM L200 fault code check engine light flashing why are we getting U200 codes come up U1101 Just trying to get a better description of what the code is if I can find Turbo That's probably going to be Little power L200 turbo diesel Is it the boost leak that I'd had? Automatic transmission AT ECU Which is what it seems like to me Invalid or missing data. So I'm just having a little read here, trying to figure out what this code is. U zero. I mean, U codes are usually software, but or Canvas. It's not. It's all L two hundred Tritons have this code, and it's not causing an identifying your problem. High is made at Mitsubishi showed high pressure regulator. Obviously it's not a code I'm really familiar with here. It means nothing, it is not showing a fault with your car. Mm, strange. That's according to that one. Let's see if we have any sort of other info anywhere else. What's this? Yeah, so again, this is saying that it's an irrelevant code if it's a manual transmission. Which this is. Now this one says it's an ECU internal fault. Some of these messages on here are saying that it's fuel related and others are saying it's the um, transmission control module which this wouldn't need because it's a manual. See this one here is saying that it's faulty injectors. Others are saying it's an ECU. This guy here is setting up time and it looks like one of the fuel system. Uh, let's just go back and see uh, let's just go into the live data here hang on see what these other codes are first uh, same transmission timeout air mixer damper that's for the heater is it a 
immobilizer. We've got the same code. We've got the same code in the immobilizer, which is weird. So that would say it's related to the immobilizer. Whereas this one is saying mm, not equipped. It's all a bit weird. It looks like it's. Mm, let's uh, go back to the engine. Look at some live data for the DPF. So many lists on here. Zero differential M6 M8. Differential pressure sensor sot loading by the pressure of the DPF. So we dose dose two. Uh, change that over to. This is always tricky to um, press this bit. Okay, so looking at that, it's got sort of jumping between minus five, zero to minus five to even minus ten. Let's hold the engine speed up to sort of three thousand RPM. It looks like we have a damaged DPF, really. Unless we've got a split holes, maybe. I'm gonna have a look around. Or, of course, it could be uh, a bad sensor, but we'll check that with a manometer as well to confirm we're getting the same readings that we are here. Um, go back anyway from here for a minute. Now, let's see if these are sort of like hard faults, and so if they clear or not. I said they don't even clear, which would suggest it's software or wiring. Um, let me go back in here. Some of those items that were coming up before saying it's re related to the uh, fuel injectors. So I don't know if we could maybe do something on here. Initialization. Supply pump exchange service. DPF sensor exchange. What's the supply pump? Fuel pump? I'm not sure. Injector writing learned value reset throttle learning test injector writing readout learning small injection quantity learning. Let's try that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so what that's just done there is increase the revs very slightly. So I'm not sure if what I'm doing is actually going to help, but it's worth a try. But um, the code seems to be very contradicting. Um, it comes up as in, in the AC as a fault, in the engine as a fault, manual transmission, uh, AT automatic transmission. So yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a strange code. Obviously, I, I could figure it out if I, if I do spend some more time trying to just, trying to research the code. But yeah, we're just getting a bit of engine RPM increase now. Give that a couple of minutes to um, finish. It just increased a little bit more there, 1175 RPM, just under 1200. Now it's coming back down. Okay, that's complete. Now let's try a delete again, see what happens. No, okay, so anyway, so if we go back to talking about the DPF, I was just seeing if we can clear those codes, but if we talk about the DPF, that pressure that's there looks like it's too low, so is it is there actually low pressure in the DPF? Or is it, so we could have a damaged DPF substrate, which is, is cracked or broken, uh, which is, the pressure's dropped because of that. We could have a split hose, 
we could have bad readings from the DPF pressure sensor, so we'll have a look at those three items and see what we can find out. DPF does look very sooty. I'm inside the exhaust. So here's the turbo. I'm trying to see where the DPF pressure sensor is. Okay, under the car. Here we can see the hoses. Another one over here. They all look in good shape. Those hoses actually come up here behind the brake servo and end up down over here. Bit of a stupid place to put it. Okay, so I'm going to use a manometer to check the actual pressure of the DPF. So we have engine running 0 0.8. Okay, so now we hold the revs up. Sixteen millibars, and now that's come down to zero point two at idle. Okay, so we'll put that all back together. So this is going to need a DPF replacement for a fix. This is the boost holes that the customer replaced himself, and his last mechanic. There was oil around that, and his last mechanic told him not to worry about it, and just done a fourth region. Okay, so that's it. We're all finished on the Mitsubishi. So yeah, a little bit ridiculous. I mean, some of the stories that he's been telling me there. Went to a mechanic, you know, three, was it three or four times, had four regens done. Um, he pointed out, the customer himself pointed out that, you know, there is oil leaking from this boost hose and the mechanic said, oh yeah, let's not worry about that for now. Let's just try and sort out your DPF first. Um, the boost hose would have been the cause of the DPF issues starting off. It's possible that the fourth regens that this other guy was doing has now killed the DPF of course there's no way for me to actually verify that because I don't know how it happened uh, the DPF could have already been failed and he's just been force region and it would have would have failed the DPF anyway which again is pointless but again it just points me back to more of the reason why I'm making this these videos um, if you're doing a forced regeneration check the DPF pressures make sure they're not too low and also make sure they're not too high what could have happened with this one is the boost hose was gone for a long time it built up uh, an extreme amount of soot and then someone's done a fourth regen which has made the temperature of the dpf go above its limit and crack and it's very likely that that's happened um obviously the other, the other option is which still isn't isn't good is the dpf was already damaged and he's just been going back to someone who's doing doing fourth regens fourth regens while he's got a boost leak which is absolutely pointless. So we're pretty much done now and I'll see you in the next video.